welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make your very own quilt binding. Now this might seem like a simple project and I know you can buy these in the store, but making your own is actually really fun and it's a great way to make your quilts unique. Now one of my favorite things to do is to make scrappy binding for my quilts. So what I'll do is after I'm done making a quilt project, I'll take all the leftover scraps from that project and turn it into binding for that quilt. That makes it super unique. It matches the quilt really nicely and it just makes it a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll show you how to make this cute little roll of quilt binding. Here's what you're going to need. Some fabric, a ruler, a rotary cutter, and of course your sewing machine. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm just going to show you how to make binding using a fat quarter, but of course you're going to want to get the appropriate amount of fabric that you need for your particular piece that you are going to be binding. Now one of my favorite websites is called Quilters Paradise and they have all kinds of great information on what length you need to cut binding at, how many strips you need to cut based on how long your fabric is, and I use it all the time because sometimes I'm cutting binding from yardage, but sometimes I'm cutting them from little fat quarters like this, or sometimes I'm making scrappy uh, binding. So that website's really great because you can put in how long your fabric is so I can put in like 18 or 22 inches or whatever I have and then how wide I want my binding and then how big my piece is and it will tell me exactly how many strips of that binding I need to cut. So definitely check that out. I'll put a link for it in the description box below the video as well so you can get that information. But for now we're just going to go with the basics and I have a fat quarter here just to kind of show you. It is still folded in half and I like to cut my binding two at a time just because I feel like it's a little bit easier that way. So for my first First cut what I want to do is actually trim up this edge because I'm not sure if you can see but they don't quite line up perfectly and to make sure that I'm getting a straight cut I'm just using this line on my ruler here I'm lining up with the bottom of my fat quarter just so that it's nice and straight and then that way I know that whatever I cut along this side will be straight so I'm gonna go ahead now and just make that cut try not to move my ruler around too much there <laughs> All right, and then whenever you're not using this, I always make sure to put that up so that you're protected because these things are very sharp. Now we can go ahead and cut our binding strips. So I like to make mine two and a half inches wide. That's just kind of what I do for most of my projects unless it's a really small project. But you can, of course, do whatever you're more comfortable with. And for my ruler, these numbers right here with the black circles are actually the halves. And then if you turn it over, sorry about the lighting, uh, these numbers are the whole numbers. So I'm actually gonna go by my half inch numbers here. And I'm gonna line up that two and a half inch edge right here along the edge of my fat quarter. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make a cut and I'm cutting two at a time if you recall. So there is one strip and actually two strips because this is folded in half. I'm gonna go ahead and make a couple more just to kind of show you. And I will cut as many of these as I need to get around my project. So from this one fat quarter, we can probably cut three of these. I can open it up and get one more strip out of them if I need to. So this little bit down here is folded in half. We can open that up if we need and get one more strip out of that. Okay. Now we've got all of our strips here, and the next thing that I want to do, and I probably should have done this at the beginning, I just forgot, but I do normally do this beforehand, is we just need to cut off these salvage edges. So I'll just get those as straight as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now we've got all of our little strips, and now it's time to sew them together. I'll show you two different ways to sew these together, um, but basically you're going to be putting them right sides together and for the most part I tend to just sew straight seamed binding because it just seems so much faster and easier and less waste. So I would just take this over to my machine and sew these two together using a quarter of an inch seam allowance right there and then when I press it open I've got a nice piece of binding. If you would like, I know it's very popular to sew on the bias edge for binding. So in that case you'll take one of your binding strips this way, place the other one in an L shape like that and then you'll sew from this corner to this corner chop this off one quarter inch away from your seam allowance and then when you fold it open you'll have a nice straight piece of binding again but you have this kind of uh, diagonal edge sometimes that's handy because when you fold this your uh, seam will be a little bit less bulky than sometimes it can be if you just do the straight seam edge like I said um, you can really do either one it doesn't matter like I said, I tend to just do the straight seam just because it's so much faster, easier, there's less cutting and less waste. All right, so we're over to our machine and I've just taken two of our pieces. I've laid them right sides together and I'm just gonna sew a quarter of an inch down this side right here.
All right, I'm not even gonna cut my thread. I'm just going to grab the other end of this piece right here, lay it right side up. Okay, and then I'm just gonna grab another piece of fabric right here, lay it again right sides down, and keep on going. All right, again, I'm going to grab the other end of this piece, lay that right side up, grab another strip, and I'm just gonna continue adding strips until I've got my desired length. All right, so now we have something that looks like this. I'm gonna take this over to my cutting table and just cut these little uh, strips apart, and then we're gonna press it, and we'll be done with our binding. All right, so here is our pile of binding, and I am actually just going to start at one end here, and I just fold my binding in half, wrong sides together, and just start pressing. And I'm gonna do this all the way down this long strip of binding. When I get to one of these seams, I'm just going to press it open, and keep going. And this is how I make all of my binding, whether I'm doing a scrappy binding or whether I've cut it from yardage. Um, it doesn't really matter. This is pretty much exactly the same technique. And as you'll notice, I didn't even press it before I cut it. Binding is pretty forgiving. And no, I did not backstitch at the stop and starts of my seams. This one's coming apart a little bit, but it'll actually get caught in the seam when we go to attach it to our quilt. So I'm not even gonna worry about it. And there you have it. Here's all of our finished binding. Now what I like to do with this just to keep it nice and organized so it doesn't start getting all tangled up is I'll just fold it over like this and just slowly start rolling up my binding and then it just makes this cute little roll and I just kind of try and keep it nice and organized as I go. And I just keep rolling these up like this and if I'm not gonna use them right away, then it's nice because it kind of keeps them all together. You can stick a pin in it in the end so it doesn't come unraveled. And then they're ready to go when you need them for a project. Then when I'm all done, I might just take a little pin and stick it in there. And then that way it doesn't come unrolled on me. But there you go, you've got a cute little roll of binding. You can set this on yourself until you're ready to use it. And in case you're curious, you can get about four yards of binding out of one fat quarter. And then here's a little tip for you. If you roll your binding like this and you have a machine like I do where you have an extra one of these on here, you can actually just put your binding right on there and then you can just grab it and pull on it and it'll just come out just like thread and you can bind your quilt that way without it getting all over the floor and getting all tangled. So that's just an extra little tip for you. All right guys, that is it. Here's our little bundle of quilt binding. As you can see, that was super fun and easy and you can definitely make your own. You don't have to buy these at the store, although you can, um, but really it's not very hard and I pretty much 100% make my own quilt binding all the time. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. That way I know to keep making fun projects for you. Thanks so much for joining me for today's tutorial and I will see you next time.